Hi, this is Paul again. Um, a few days ago I did a video where I demonstrated how you can have um, nested galleries, so a gallery inside a gallery. And I had some feedback on that asking some questions about other tricks that we might be able to do. Uh, so that's what I'm going to cover in this session today. So it's more on galleries and nested galleries and specifically on hiding and showing the, the nested galleries, being able to collapse and expand them. So let's just uh, have a quick reminder of what we're talking about. So here's my, my app. And on this screen of my app, I've got my um, parent gallery, sub gallery or nested gallery set up here. So the parent gallery is the one which is showing us the customer number and the order time. And then the sub galleries are the ones which are showing us the orders that have actually been placed. And look at the, the previous video, that covers how we can use the flexible height galleries to make sure that if we've only got one item in our sub gallery, then the sub gallery is quite small. If we've got multiple items in the sub gallery, then the sub gallery increases in size so that all of those items are displayed and visible. Okay, so there's the recap. So on to the uh, idea of expanding and collapsing. So we'll start with the, the simplest one. Let's say that what we want is to just show the parent gallery information. So we're just gonna show the customer and the order time until we click on that item and then it will expand and it will show us the, the items in the sub gallery underneath. So let's go take a quick look at that. So I'm gonna go into the design mode. I'm going to go into my child gallery, my sub gallery, and here we can see what I had set the height to. So check my previous video if, um, if you're having any difficulty understanding this. Um, in very quick recap, all we're doing is we're counting the number of rows of data that are in the sub gallery and then we're multiplying that by the height of one of the lines of data in the sub gallery and then we're just adding on a tiny bit of uh, padding on the bottom so that it all kind of appears neatly on the screen. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is we're just gonna change this one formula, this one property, and then we're gonna have from that um, the ability to expand um, the sub gallery for the item that we have selected. So we're gonna do this with a, an if statement uh, and we're gonna say if this item dot order header ID, so that's my um, main field. Um, when we're doing galleries and, and nested galleries, we use group by, so we've got a, a main table and a, a, a sub table within it. And it's order header ID, which is, uh, which is the key on that relationship. So if this item order header ID is the selected order header ID in the parent gallery, that. Um, so yeah, so if it matches, so if the, the, the ID within this sub gallery matches the ID of the selected parent gallery, then do our normal business with the height. Otherwise, let's just make the height zero. There we go. So we're just performing a test. Is this the selected one? If it is, then set the height to fit however many records are in there, otherwise set the height to zero. So we've only changed this one um, formula attached to the height property of the nested subgallery, and we'll see what the effect of that is. So let's go into our player view. And we can see here that we can click, and whichever one we click on is the one that expands, and all of the other ones collapse. So we can only have one expanded one at a time, because we've based this on the selected header is the one that has its full list uh, beneath it. 
Okay, so that's great, but let's say we want to take this a stage further, and what we want to do is we want to have the ability to open and close multiple of these galleries. So perhaps I want to have the first three open all at the same time, so I'm not forever clicking in and out of them. So let's have a little look at how we can achieve that. Okay, so uh, a quick bit of explanation then. What we're going to need to do is we're going to need to store somewhere the order header IDs of the ones that we want to have expanded. And then what we can have is we can have a test that says, OK, for this particular subgallery, if the order header ID is in our list that should be expanded, then expand it. If it's not, then leave it collapsed. So how are we going to make this, this list of order header IDs? Uh, well, what we're going to do is we're going to do that as a collection. And what we'll need to do is add and remove header IDs from that collection as we click on the orders, as we click on the, the parent gallery. So if we click on a parent gallery, which is already expanded, its number is in the collection. If we click on it again, then we'll want to remove it from the collection. If we click on one that's not expanded, that's because the number isn't in the collection yet, so we need to add its order header ID number to the collection. So we're going to do all of that on the gal order header on select property. And this is a bit of a formula, so I'm going to copy and paste it in so I don't waste time um, with my poor typing skills and, and making mistakes. So I'm going to paste it in, but then we'll, we'll talk through it. So our collection is going to be called Selected Order Header ID. So the first thing we're going to do um, in our if statement, we are going to count the rows that are within our Selected Order Header ID. That's our collection, our list of Selected Order Header IDs. So we're going to count the ones where the order header ID is equal to this item's order header ID. So does this item's order header ID appear in the list? Okay. So if it does not appear in the list, then add it to the list. So we're using the collect function to say, okay, collect, I want to add to this collection, I want to add to this list um, the order header ID of the current item and we're calling it order header ID. And in our else part of our if then else statement, this is where the order header ID was already in the list, we want to remove it from the list, so we're going to reuse the remove function to say remove from this collection and then we're going to identify the the record that we want to remove by using this filter again, so same filter as in the, the if statement, um, to allow us to identify the record that we want to remove. So a, a, a collection is really a, a table, although we've only got one column in it, a collection is a table, and so you've got to identify the, the row of the table that you want to get rid of, which we can do by using a filter to return that row. Okay, so let's see um, the next part of the process. So now we've got to go to our gal order detail. And remember, this is what we had previously, so let's take that out. So that was our one that said, okay, if this is the currently selected item, then um, expand it. So now I've set it back to what it was originally, uh, which is just to say, OK, always expand it. And now I'm going to change that. And again, to um, save the time of me typing and make sure I don't make any mistakes, I'm going to copy the formula in. OK, so this is the 
the formula that I'm going to use. So quite straightforward. This is what we had originally. So this is our part that says, OK, our line items are 35 long. So make this nested subgallery as tall as 35, the height of a, an item, multiplied by the number of items that we've got. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to multiply that by um, account rows. So this is where I'm going to check whether the current order header ID is in the collection. So we're doing uh, account rows on here. Now if the order header ID is in the collection, it should only be in there once. So this count rows is either going to return 1, it's in there, or 0, it's not in there. So we're counting the rows of this filter, so it's, it's the same filter again that we were using earlier uh, in the on select of the um, parent galleries uh, property. And so yeah, so we're just multiplying by this, which is either going to return 1 or 0, depending on whether our order header ID is in our selected order header IDs collection. And then I've just got that little plus 3 on the end again there because it, it just gives a little bit of padding between the, the headers. OK, so let's see if this is going to work. Let's hit the, uh, the play button. So at the moment, my collection is empty because I haven't selected anything here. So I'm going to select the first one and boom, it's opened up. Lovely. Now I'm going to select the next one. So when I click on this um, parent gallery, then it should add the order header ID for this parent gallery to my collection. The existing one will still be in there. So, wow, we can actually open up multiple items, not just one at a time anymore. We can have multiple items at the same time. And then when we click on one of these headers, then it's going to remove that order header ID from my collection. The gallery height uh, property is going to recalculate. Um, and then once the order header ID is no longer in the collection, the formula for the height is going to end up being multiplied by zero. And it should collapse and vanish again. So let's take a quick look. Yay, there we go. So now we can open and close these to our heart's content, have whichever ones open we want. There we are, so that's how we do it. Okay, one uh, little tip, last little tip I will give is when you're doing these formulas for the uh, on select property of the order header, when I was first doing this, I was having a bit of a difficult time with the way that Power Apps tries to uh, resolve and check the formula that you're writing. Because um, if you were to delete this out and start afresh, you haven't got a selected order header ID collection anymore. If this is the only place where you add items to the selected order header ID collection and then you remove this, the selected order header ID collection disappears. And then when you're trying to type in this um, formula, uh, you're trying to do things like counting rows and, and filtering this thing, which doesn't yet exist. That doesn't exist until we get down to this part of the, the formula. So what I found was a little bit easier to do is um, I just put it on a button. I've got a button which performs a whole bunch of tasks. Don't worry about those. I'll talk about those in another another session. So what I did was I just on a button put in a instruction to say make my collection the selected order header ID collection and we're going to put in order header ID and we'll set a value of zero, any value you like should be fine in there. You can want it to be a, a numeric if your ID um, for your parent child gallery uh, is, is numeric, then you want this to, to match as well. But I just found that if I had this in here, 
then while I was trying to make the formula from scratch here, it was all an awful lot easier. Once you've got that formula in, then you can go back and you can remove this because it's not really needed anymore. Okay, so that is our expanding and contracting our galleries and using the little trick of storing in a collection the items that should be visible. And finally, finally, we can actually see that in the collections. I've got a whole load of collections in here because this is something that um, I have to do a bit of data manipulation with so I bring all the data in and then manipulate it. Um, so leaving those aside, here is our selected order header ID and we can see the IDs of the ones that we have that we have clicked on. Right. Okay, so that's that. So these formulas are a little bit hairy. They do take uh, a little bit of work to um, to get them all correct. Um, but this is, of course, a, a video. So just rewind, freeze the the video where I'm actually showing the formulas, and then you can copy the formulas yourselves and get them working in your Power Apps. Great, thanks very much. Uh, I hope this has been of help. Please leave some uh, feedback for other things that you would like to see or anything that's still unclear. And uh, as soon as I get the time, I'll, uh, I'll try and put something together for you. Okay, fantastic. That's it for now. Bye-bye. <laughs>